Not sure what's going on here. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Chess 24. I think it's the fifth anniversary. Happy anniversary, Chess 24. And we got the specialist guest. One could imagine Mr. Magnus Carlsen joining from his undisclosed location. What's going on, Magnus? Well, I'm just sitting here in this undisclosed location waiting for um, Chester's Arch. Hmm. So you will play five minute games against Mr. Swidler once he finds the challenge button until the first player has five wins. Do you like your chances? Yeah, in general I do, because uh, he's gonna he's gonna have way too much respect for me. Um, I think he doesn't. He's not gonna realize ex exactly how badly I'm gonna play, and then I will have a good chance. He also has this tendency to play a nice game and then lose on time, but be a gracious loser because he played a beautiful game because he's happy with himself. Do you have a similar strategy? Nah. I think <laughs> as uh, one valued member of the team, Mr. Luke van Veli, used to say, there's no such thing as, as bad luck. If you lost, you're either too weak or too slow. I wasn't aware there was a Luke quote. Well, not the too weak or too slow, but either you played too bad or too slowly. Yeah, I feel the same way. So did Mr. Swidler challenge you? If you guys want to follow this at home, the usernames are Paul Borter and Magzy Bokes. Magzy Bokes spelled as it's supposed to M-A-G-Z-Y. Bokes. Um... Yeah, he's not challenged me. Okay, I'll just, tell him I mean, to I'll just show you so far. <laughs> but we keep the spirits up. Don't go away. <laughs> yeah. That's the calm. Yeah. I got up at 5 a.m. this morning. I'm sure that's what people want to hear about. Went to Barcelona airport and sat three hours in a plane. Then they decided to change the plane. Then I sat two hours outside waiting for the new plane. And now I just got here, so it's a happy anniversary for all of us so far. Ah, uh, the rumors were that you were three hours late, but apparently it was rather five. No, I exaggerated a bit, I guess. Let me do the math. The flight was supposed to leave at 11, then it left at three, but I think it flew a bit faster, so four, we can split the difference. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> if there is uh, no Swidler to challenge us. Let's see who it is. It is GM Poborta. Wow, this is exciting. Then so accept and then we go? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Let's start then. Yeah, I forgot to play the Grunfeld. Let's play something else. Ah, oh, he still wants to go for the Grunfeld. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Usually we go E3 here, but then maybe he can go. Okay. Let's see. Anyway, I suspect we're going to end up in more or less the same position where I go bishop g2, e3, knight e2, and uh, try to play on the queen side. c6? It's a bit puzzling to me. He's just giving me a target, maybe? Why did he need c6? I don't get that. Okay. Guess B5 can't be too wrong. Oh, he's going to go Bishop D7, most probably. And then the question is whether I should prevent Queen A5 uh, by going, let's say, B C6 and Queen A4. The, um, Move I would probably rather play is rook b1, 
um, just to keep some flexibility. I'm just wondering whether he then goes queen a5 and mm, whether I can gain anything from the from the queen exchange. And because otherwise I might be somewhat short short of options here. Um, okay, so I have some other ideas like on queen c1, then rook b3. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it simple. It's the first game. Ninety four, obviously. So B C six followed by So by Rook B seven is tempting, but then um then he's gonna he's gonna play bishop e6, and I don't know how to pr protect that pawn. If I go rook c1, he goes rook b8, and he may take over the, the file. So I'm gonna oh, I almost blundered there. I went in knight c3 with the idea of knight d2 takes, and uh, and rook b rook b7. Maybe I can take on c6 first. Yeah, he would. Uh, he knew he had to take the bishop. No, I have to take on e4, and this is it's not too great, unfortunately. I need to to get something to c3, and and then probably d5 pretty soon. Otherwise, I'm not going to be be very happy. Bishop s3 is natural. And I should aim for d5. At least with a knight on d5, you kind of double rooks so easily, since I will have a have a nice little fork. Now I'm probably intending rook a4. Wow! So he's playing very concretely. Maybe I can go rook a4 anyway. Once again, rook c8 is not a threat because of the fork on e7. Yeah, king f8, he's tricky. I know how he plays. But since if I take on on uh, b6 twice, he's going to have bishop takes d4 and, and back rank checkmate. So I have to... But now I can take on b6, no? Rook b8. And knight d7 is a fork, and that's the game. Thank you very much. Wow, that went a little bit or a lot easier than it should have. I think after after I had to give up the bishop with uh, um, should I play? E5. After I gave up the bishop with uh, with bishop e4, I, I don't think I had any particular grounds to think I'm I'm better. But that what happened. So this is an I wouldn't say an old favorite of mine. I just played the line. I didn't particularly like the line. But anyway, you got to play something. I even played a few games and. In classical, got a good position against Nakamura, but Drew, and I played a solid game against Karyakin and Drew. Yeah, in the old days, everybody just assumed that after um, that after d5 and so on, white would be would be better because uh, I am no light square bishop, but. I think now people are looking at it a bit differently. Uh, seeing that the black setup also has its points. Hmm. F4, that's a bit unpleasant. I was expecting something, something quiet in the style of, I don't know, bishop e3 or something, just claiming that white is slightly better because of 
better bishop. Um, hmm. Okay. I'm going to play, play very, very simply. So he's probably going to take. No. Sort of claiming that this is is nothing. Um, I'm not sure it's it's correct though. This I wasn't so afraid of. I, I was thought he, he was gonna go bishop f4 and then maybe rook f8, knight d2, takes, takes, and he's a bit better. Uh, now I feel like I'm marginally worse, but but very solid. If he goes knight d4, I guess I can go king f7. That's pretty solid. Worst case, I can go something like takes and then c6. And since his pawns re cannot really advance in the in the center, my my king isn't as uncomfortable as it looks. So he goes for this. Probably going to play bishop g5 to prevent yeah to prevent uh, knight f6. Now the question is whether I'm just in time to to protect everything. Which it looks like I am, but you can never be too sure. Rook d8. Uh, I don't think he has anything here. So I would very much like to transfer the knight to uh, to the f6 square. Um, the question is whether I'm whether I'm in time or I should just go for for something a bit simpler with. Knight g6 to f4. Maybe that's what I should do. That surprises me a bit. Is, is he provoking knight f4 to go king f3? I just, just want to take. Anyway, if he takes, I think that's a definite achievement for me. If rook d4, I have c5. And I believe I'm just better now. Yeah, I think I'm just better. Unless h4 is is um, quite strong now. h3, I can go h5. So the idea is very simple. Uh, okay. So I have a choice here whether to take or to go king f5 and then play g4. The problem is with take is that he goes rook e1 and my king is kind of cut out cut off from, from the pawns. But I don't think I have a I have a great choice. Once again he surprises me. Okay, king e6. If it checks me again, then king f5. Yeah, h4. But I'm not. I'm not so unhappy to see h4 since my extra pawn is not great, but at least my my rook gets activated. Hmm. I can play. I can play rook f8. Uh, I don't think he can. He can afford to. To exchange, okay. I have to speed up. That's the main point here. So now the point is obviously rook f4, then rook f6, and I have a presumably winning pawn ending. And if rook f uh, e4, I'm going to go king f6, rook f4, and then king g5, and hopefully I will be able to go rook f6 next. Okay, that makes sense. Don't see any reason why c6 should be bad. So, okay. I don't think he achieved a whole lot there. At least now my, my rook is in the game and I have at least a half decent pawn up. 
I don't think it's objectively enough to win, but in practice it may be. Just trying to improve my piece a little and hopefully setting a little trap, which is now, which is not a trap, I realize, because he has rook d6, rook a4, rook c6, then I thought I had rook a2, but he has kings, rook c5, so I don't actually, I don't actually gain anything, which is a bit of a pity. Okay, I'll take one. Yeah, but now any winning chances are fairly minuscule, I think. Now, obviously, intending queen, uh, king g4, and then the rook exchange if he goes if he goes rook g8. But he doesn't he doesn't have to do that. He can he can wait. I have some small chances still, I think. But I gotta speed up with a touchpad and everything. I'm not gonna be very fast in a, in a time scramble. This I'm quite happy to see. Isn't this just running now? What are you doing? Yeah, I know it's just dead lost. Okay. I feel like I haven't done much, but it's, it's going quite smoothly so far. Okay, let's try e4. Let's see what he does. C5 is in must win mode. Let's try something a bit cheeky. Hmm. Okay, I had this idea once that after a3, a e6, I can go on knight f3, and if he goes for time enough style positions, then a3 is actually pretty pretty useful. Uh, after knight f6, knight c3, then we're back to a theoretical position, and also after queen c7 or a6, knight c3, then it's, it's, all, it's all good. If he goes a6 immediately, maybe I can even play c4. Uh, looks not uninteresting. Yeah, I suppose C4 is a bit much, so I'm just gonna go knight C3. And we're back to a theoretical position. How about that? Unfortunately, I don't think it gives quite a whole lot. I never knew what to do after, after B5, to be honest. I don't know. It's, looks feels like everybody's missing the queen out pretty early these days. So who am I to to devise something better? I guess the idea is if he takes, then I will have some very very slight pressure along the the semi open h file and. And also claim that after f3, his bishop on D b7, even after c5, won't be doing much. And maybe I can. Uh, maybe I can try something on the on the queen side. Uh, yeah, he gains tempo, but then again, my king was going to f2 anyway, so probably won't matter much. So I'm really aching to play for and knight to be one. 
I had something similar. I, I used to love this plan uh, against the, I was, well, was young. And I, I had something similar against Kamski in the in Muslim game in the World Cup in 2005. Fortunately, I misplayed it and, and lost, but up to some point it was was uh, kind of a model game, uh, at least for for my standards back then. Yeah, the question was whether I should whether I should play uh, maybe I could go rook five. Could go rook c eight though. Protect the pawn. Indirectly, and I'm I'm not so sure that gives me anything. So, question question is also whether I should go go a a five myself. But I give him the square on, on b five. Then hmm. oh. yeah, this is absolutely nonsensical. Obviously, uh, spending your Spending your time doubting yourself in in a blitz game. I mean, my, I've spent half my time already, and it's all on on nonsense. Then again, my position is good. Who am I to to complain? Yeah, I'm sort of expecting bishop c6 now, and uh, yeah, then I have to evaluate the consequences of knight knight b6. I'm not so sure though. He goes bishop b6 and then a5, so. Maybe I should go rook d1 first. And after bishop b6, I was hoping that this was even even stronger. Uh, maybe it isn't, who knows. So I can take on b5 first. The question then is whether I have some tricks, let's say after bishop b5, a, b, a, b, rook a1, Rook a1, rook b8, rook a7, king d6. Are there any tricks there? e5, I can play, he goes knight e5. Not sure if I achieved anything. Okay, I don't see it, so I'm just gonna take immediately. Can't be be too bad first. Maybe it's just in time with King the King running, yeah. Maybe I just have to make a draw. Huh, it's a bit a bit of a shame. I think it should go e5, yeah. If he went king b7, rook d6, I might have had some chances, but now it's probably probably just a draw. Yeah. Okay, still still got a lead. The a complete whitewash is not on the cards, but the game. No, the match at least goes on, and that's a good thing. Okay, let's try something else. Just play my regular repertoire and see what he does. He doesn't want to play d4. So this is what I usually do, and so that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah, this is what I had against Maxime Rochelle Legrave in the Sinkful Cup last year. And uh, very quickly, my uh, compatriot, the great Yonle de Kammer, declared my position to be 
be much, much worse. And I've been scared, scared to repeat the line ever since. But the game didn't go so badly, and uh, I'm not sure I I agree 100%. So here we go again. And there is one thing I like about the line is that there there is a bit of a uh, how should I put this delicately? Fuck you factor that I can play like this and still be okay. Probably not allowed to swear on the stream. I'm not aware of the Just24 guidelines. But anyway. I'm sure I'll get, I'll get away with it. I usually do. So clearly he's got a few extra tempo, extra tempi on sort of normal lines, but I'm not sure it means that much. And the, this is a bit like the stone wall. Yes, there are, are holes in my position. Uh, yes, there are they are a bit ugly, but it's also solid. There are no particular weak pawns uh, or anything. There are just weak squares. And they can be occupied, but whether you can gain something something concrete from it, I don't know. Yeah, so I didn't want GF, F4. It feels like I'm just weakening our position a bit too much. Um, so Bishop F5 looks quite solid to me. I've got some foothold in the center. Later I can go Queen D7. Put the bishop on e6 and uh, start start to fight for for d5 as well. I'm not particularly scared of of dc. I go uh, of sorry. I go bc. I go dc, and then um, yeah, you can go knight e3. But now now I have I don't know if I should take first. Maybe e4. At least e4. I got to I got to do it to to open. Open up for this somewhat dormant bishop. Okay, now let's take. He's probably going to go dc. Then rook d8. If knight d5, I have knight e5 attacking c4. And yeah, liking my position more and more. If he has to move the bishop, then I'm certainly better. But but yeah, ninety five, ninety five is just it's just good. I think he can go bishop e three, or he can do this. But now I just want to pawn very very cleanly. And he, Andy has to exchange queens, so my my lack of or relative lack of king safety won't be an issue. It's a little bit late to think, unfortunately, for him. So he just has to go for this and and I'm not sure he's an, he's a religious man, but maybe if he is then pray. He's got some hope though. He's got some hope. A5 is coming. I can go bishop c3. Then he will exchange one pair of rooks and then bring the king to the center. Uh, and if he goes rook b3, I have to 
to Bishop on A5 and it's maybe a little bit misplaced. But then again, yeah. Those who know me know that I value preventing counterplay above almost anything else, so that's what I'm going to do. H5. Somehow my instinct said G5, but since this is live for, for many years, I'm not going to embarrass myself by, by putting pawns on, on the wrong color for, for no reason. I don't see a winning plan, but I don't see a drawing plan either. And my experience in, in those cases is that it's usually going to be fine in the end. Um, well, he's threatening, sort of threatening uh, c4 followed by by a5, so I'm going to go bishop b4 and pretend that his, his rook is trapped. So he has this, but now, now my king is, is entering. And Yeah, rook d2 is really tempting. But yeah, I can do that later. I'm threatening rook b7 now, which he either ignored or didn't see. Then a6, trapping the rook. Even after c3, I'm going a6. Not a bad game, I think. I like that one. This is all going a lot better than I thought. So, so far I've tried d4 and e4. Ah, I should have known this was going to happen. C5? Ah, he wants d5, bishop c3. Okay, why not? And f5. Yeah, I read something about this quite recently, I think. Maybe you're supposed to go e4? I don't know. Thing is, after h4, knight f6, h5, I think black goes rook g8 instead of taking on h5 and that was sort of a discovery that made this line somewhat playable at least hmm. so what to do my instinct says knight f3 and then Uh, then he goes d6, I think, and once again I have to decide what to do about what about e about e4 and, and c3. Okay, I suppose the line belongs on f3, anyways. Yeah, knight e4 makes sense, but now I'm gonna go queen c2. I don't think that was very accurate. If castles, I'm going to go bishop b3, and if queen c3, then I take take an a4. And I think his knight is, is stranded. He's going to get four pawns. Well, maybe e6, d6 I can go? Or maybe e5 is, maybe e5 is the point. Okay, we'll see. I don't think I have any anything better. Looking at lines now, like 
queen c3, queen c3, knight c3, a4, e5 is a try, then knight e5, maybe d6, knight f3, bishop f5 is possible. Otherwise, I mean, the line I was looking at was knight rook um, e8, then king d2, and um, if knight d5, I can go knight g4, and you cannot really move the knight because of the four kind of six. And if you threaten the knight by by d6, I can play knight h6. Now realizing that the king is interfering with the bishop on d2, so the knight will be hanging on d6. So I don't know how good that is. Anyways, that's what I'm sort of suspecting. I don't expecting. I don't know why he's he's thinking to be honest. Because if he doesn't go queen c3, I think he's just busted. Knight goes somewhere, then yeah, uh, some kind of um, um, well, something was gonna hurt. I lost my my. Train of thought there happens. Okay, so a4. Unless I should go. Unless I should go bishop a6 first. But yeah, screw those subtleties. You go with e6, which I am, which I am frankly quite shocked by. Thirty five was forced. I, I kind of want to go bishop h6 first, and then, then if um, if ed, I'm going king d2. Ah, he has knight e4. I wanted to play for mate somehow. Okay, guys, I'm gonna have to, to lose the tempo problem. I could have gone d6 maybe. Then again, he has he has e5, so but that is certainly a better better version for me. But I don't know what he's doing here. I think I'm considerably considerably better. Which b4 is tempting. Which base h6 is also tempting as well. Bishop h6, maybe his plan is to go h5, then I can take on f8 and d6 and regain something. Okay, bishop h6. Rook e8, then knight g5, knight e5, bishop e4. I don't know, by the way, what's the concept of banter blitz. If you're, at, if there's supposed to be actual banter, like much talk. I don't know. I'm more comfortable just talking about the games, trying. I don't know about succeeding, but trying at least to to explain my 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 thoughts as as I go along. And I'm really not in the mood for. For banter, anyways. I just wanna, just wanna have a nice, friendly game. Really? Okay. Now I needed to. I mean, knight d4 just won immediately, which is, I mean, that is completely unforgivable. That's the kind of mistake you just don't make. Ugh. That really bugs me. He's probably hoping for uh, g4 and f95. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. 94, how can you miss that? Just a bit too busy talking, not thinking. We're we both down to one minute after having made 20 moves. 
that is just too slow, unfortunately. But I have, I do have one thing going for me, which is that my position is incredibly good. And basically winning. So should stop complaining. Again, when you're playing Peter Swiddler in a banter blitz, you shouldn't be the one complaining the most. That's his job. So yeah, now bishop e4, then rook f6, and at the end, if knight g4, I have either rook e6 or rook f8. So that's gonna be that's gonna be a W. Okay. Well, half a point more, and the match is over, and I can go back and enjoy the sun in my undisclosed loca location. Okay, knight of three. Let's play g6. Four, d6. We're probably going to get uh, a type of position, which is fine by me. H3. I don't know what the subtleties here are. Did I bring the knight out too early to f6? Did I bring the bishop out too early to g7? Who knows? Should I play a6? Should I play c6? Or should I just be flexible in castle? I guess the latter. Let's see, six. Yeah, we more or less had this before, I think. Uh, no. I think it was in, in Saudi and... Uh, In the world, uh, in the world rapids there. Or maybe it was Blitz. Was it Blitz? I don't know. My memory is so poor these days. I think the game went quite similarly to this. Question is, is A5 a threat? I guess not. Now, at the very least, I'm pro preventing knight to d4 since then d5 will hang so yeah i have no choice but to to take it i think uh, positionally i could not afford to allow a6 i think even after b5 you could go a6 with all sorts of unpleasantness So, next few moves, I'm going to try and in intensify the pressure on, on d5. And, uh, yeah, again, the extra pawn that I have is not, is not great, but I don't particularly see, see a plan for him. Like, he really needs the knight on d4 in this, these types of positions. And it sort of makes me think that he should probably have done that that before castles. This line, by the way, is very good for for blitz since it's really quite quite easy for for black to play. And although objectively white is, is obviously obviously better um, than in, in blitz, it may may not actually mean much. So if I go rook c8, I think he's just gonna snap off that pawn on a7. If and if Knight b6, I don't see why a5 is not hanging. Although I have knight c4. I do have knight c4. Mm. I guess that pawn. I'm gonna have a nice play on the dark squares. Question is if I have something better. Okay. Um. I really want to go a4 now. If he has to go bishop b6, I'm quite happy. And yeah, I think I'm going to go a4. Yeah. 
Ah, he goes immediately. That was missed. That's a bit of a bummer. I thought I was skating after. I thought for some reason I thought it was going bishop a4, and then I could go b5. And whatever way he takes on b5, I, I get I get a d5 pawn. But yeah, no, it's I think nothing special. So I take queen c7. I think he still cannot go. Go uh, knight d4 with with impunity since that pawn seems to be hanging. So he still has some some problems to solve. Uh, yeah, that's a good move. Intending both knight b5 and knight d4. I take back everything I said about having problems to solve. He's, he's obviously okay here. Hmm. Fair enough. Got to play faster. I'm trying to, to activate the rooks now. It's queen e2, but maybe then I can go. Like d7? Attacking the knight? I don't see a lot of prospects in my position now. I'm not worried, but it's nothing to be too excited about anymore. Obviously, I have to keep an eye on him occupying the, the C6 square, because then there could be some tr trouble for me. Uh, I guess he may be thinking about Queen E2 now. Queen d2. Gonna try and play rook c5, I guess. Unless knight a4 is good then. Okay, let's try and make a useful move first. It's just weakening, I don't know. It's always nice to have air for the king. Uh, I don't understand that move. Well, if I take, ah, he's got knight g5. Okay. I like this. I like trading off the knight and getting a nice score on f6 for, for the bishop. Now I know what my next move is: king g7. Unless he starts going g4, then I have to reevaluate everything. What am I thinking about? Why am I not going e5 when I have a chance? He goes knight c6, that's the problem. Yeah, that's why I, why I don't do that. Maybe that was still good. But it felt unnecessary. If he goes, has to go c4, I'm quite happy. Then I'd shift the rook to a5, probably. Because knight c6, I take and queen c7 win the pawn. And um, try to start some active operations. Yeah, there's still not too much I can do. Maybe rook a5, always nicer to have to rook on an open file. Attack something whenever you can. Soften his king a bit. I have to play faster. That's the, that's the main worry here. Uh, don't know if I can take that. Oh, I just missed that e7 saying because I have come to play. I didn't actually miss it, I was just for dramatic purposes. The one thing you cannot do is think. 
Without his time advantage, he has, he has nothing. So F2 is hanging, which is good news. Okay. Now this looks like curtains for him. Bishop d5, f4, bishop d4. That should be the end of the match. Okay, yeah, last game was sloppy, but nevertheless, happy with, uh, happy with the games. Okay, are we done? Can I go? Almost. Congratulations. Thank you. To wake up here. You made it look very easy. Yeah. One of my favorite express to use one of my favorite expressions, it went quite smoothly. So <laughs> yeah. I don't dare to use the word around you anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, no, I think it was only it was less than an hour. Um uh, so you don't really lose concentration and lose energy if you're doing okay at, at at the start so that was that was the good thing whenever i play longer than that i always end up my the quality and always ends up dipping quite a bit so uh but yeah clearly clearly peter has had much better days do you get tilted if you were to lose one game like can the quality dip or can you withstand like a loss in a blitz tournament no, I get tilted. <laughs> okay. So, <Good> to you. <laughs> yeah, no, I get tilted, and sometimes that's a good thing. Um, and but yeah, when I when I don't strike back immediately, it usually lasts for lasts for a few games, and that can, uh, yeah, I mean, I've ruined several days in the World Blitz by just staying on tilt after one, particularly. Then, yeah, thank you so much for joining us, Magnus, and enjoy the beach you're going to have to. Yeah, no, thank you. It was, uh, was a good event, and it's nice to, uh, to, play, um, to play a bit of Blitz again and to, to see that my brain at this sort of still works. Certainly did. All right, enjoy your vacation. Thanks a lot, Magnus. Bye. See you soon.